All right, we'll call our February 22nd board meeting to order uh, at River Bluff Education Center here in Red Wing. Uh, I do have a motion uh, to approve the agenda. So moved. Second by Dawn and seconded by Bob. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, the consent agenda. Uh, Approval of January 25th, 24 meetings. Uh, Jerry did the claims. And then we got some staff updates of resignations. Um, no new hires. And a leave of absence. Yeah, touch on any of that, Jerry. Um, Min Martinos has uh, been a long time coordinator for our county. Um, in most most recently, she's been the first to three coordinator. She is retiring at the end of this year. And um, then we have one staff member that has asked for a. All right. Is there a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Moved by Marilyn. Is there a second? I'll second it. Moved by Jason. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. Uh, public input. I don't have any uh, reports and communications. Business manager report. All right. So we got that first one out on top of it. Uh, so this is our budget as of January 31st. We had received, we'll blow it up one more, Cindy. I think it's 8 million, but it's 8 million something. 8,681,446 dollars, or 46% of our adopted revenue budget compared to 41%, 41.6 and 46. Um, you'll see everything is tracking it has been passed. Adopted budget, we have expended $8,415,439 or 44.75% of our adopted budget compared to 44.92 and 42.57. So again, we are tracking to meet our budget at the end. So let's keep scrolling down, Cindy. I want to show one thing at the bottom. Uh, as you recall, we are tracking on our budget, and our adopted budget did use 82274 of fund balance. So that is where we are projected to go. We will be doing a revised budget once we have the teacher negotiations done um, so that we can That'll bring that our, to you. Our jumping off point then for planning for next year. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Um, cash flow uh, has been difficult, uh, to say the least, lately. Um, we are down right now. Uh, as of Monday, we had $36,000 in the bank. Um, and cash is coming in just in time to make payroll. So that has been kind of the story since we made our big bond payment, our lease payment in January of over almost $770,000 um, until I can get more of the payments for 5RO in, um, it's going to be low. Usually those start coming in. Um, we got about $500,000 in this week, um, which will help us make the payroll next week, maybe get a few more bills paid. And we other, um, if, if things track as they have in the past, it looks like we have money coming in from members in early March, early to March as well, which will set us back on track. Uh, as of today, we just have $2 million in outstanding accounts receivable. That would uh, help this cash flow once we commit it to the door. Do we anticipate doing any early billing or early payment requests? Um, I have not yet, just because of how high the outstanding receivables are. I have contacted districts occasionally and said, hey, when can I anticipate this? My cash flow is really low, and uh, typically they can get me something within the week. They don't know I need it. All right. Thank you, Jackie. 
Uh, letter B. Looks like it's school board recognition month. It is. And you know, I really, you already sit on boards and committees in those districts. So we really do appreciate you taking the time to also sit on our committees and come to these board meetings and problem solve things. So we have a certificate of appreciation for each one of you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. My board of kids shows that I'm Mr. Gander. What? I, well, I'm a board board. Oh, okay. I'm not looking in the right place. Okay. <laughs> it's only been a year. It's all right. It's okay. All right. Well, thank you for the certificates. Um, move on to letter C program enrollment updates. Yes. Um, so that would be that other graph I sent you that one thing. Mm -hmm. So one of um one of the things we are going to start doing is adding this to Jackie's um business manager report. Um, and then also be sharing it out with superintendents. So that, can you blow that up one more? That's right. So you can see the districts are listed down the left-hand side and then across the top are our programs. Um, so you can see by district, how many students are enrolled in each program. And then um, below that, you can see um, how many uh, special education students are in each of those programs. So we have an overall enrollment right now of 756 students. Um, if you had told me that 10 years ago, I'd have said, no, that will never happen. So um, we have a lot of moving pieces right now. And Any, go ahead. I would say these are enrollment are going to be enrollment snapshots as of a given day of the month. You can see this was as of um, February 20th. I'll, we'll try to make sure that date is on there. But no, and I was pulling about that date so that yeah. we have some trend data. Um, any questions on that? I can, can go ahead. That can we get that? that yes, it's not on the. Can you can correct. Yeah. Yes, we can send that to you okay. right after the meeting. We were still formulating it. Okay. Um, and as we get into staffing, I can. We can also talk about what is our max enrollment in that program. Because some of our programs were not at the max. Um, not that you know we don't have to be at the max, but there's. Um, we can we'll staff differently based on the enrollment of students we're projecting in those programs and it's good for you to see those numbers as we move into um the staffing in the past we've given it to you by each program staffing but i think this is a clearer picture over all of the programs another question mm -hmm. so i know that for our secondary students um we have part-time Mm -hmm. And full time. Mm -hmm. Our, if students are enrolled in our elementary five or all, are they full time? Full -time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good question. That is a synchronous right. program. Okay. And then they are all full time students. Any other questions on that? Okay. After you get it, take a look at it. There's changes or more information we can provide to you on that. We will certainly do that. Thank you. All right, thank you. On letter D, instructional coaching update. Yes, I'm going to have Jess Whitman come up. <laughs> Jess is our director of instruction equity, and she oversees this program. I am not going to go through this whole presentation. This is a presentation. Just my favorite slide, right? <laughs> the superintendents got this presentation to kind of, and we had our instructional coaches just so they could see them and hear from them and how this has been going. So I'm going to have you probably scroll down quite a bit, ladies. Um, right there, actually, stop the so faces. you can see the who they are. With eight instructional coaches across the county, and I'm sure you've probably seen one um, at least from your district. And then Weston has been um, supporting across the county with his uh, reading pilot that you are all uh, familiar with. And now we have expanded that to all of our special education uh, teachers as well throughout the county um, based on the results that we've been seeing with it. So if you can go down right here is uh, this is our K 
data you can see across all of us combined, including any GCD programs, everything. Um, so our C's grant says that we want to increase reading proficiency across all of our districts. So if you go up a little bit, Cindy, it says like over these past five years, we have increased by 10% in K. I think that's where we are focusing right now. That's where we've kind of pulled everybody back down to um, is looking at K and even beforehand. So we're seeing, obviously that's not the only thing we're doing in K, but we are seeing some good results in K. First grade, we're down 7%. Um, that's across the county over five years. You can see we kind of dipped during COVID and we're working our way back up, um, but we're not there yet. <coughs> Second grade um, down 5% um, and third grade down 7%. So those are the things that I always am putting in front of the instructional coaches for them to then put in front of our elementary teachers and us all problem solving. How do we do that better? One of our strategies was to get in with the parents before K starts and then pull all of our elementary instructional coaches down um, to try to do some strategies K and one before they get into second, third, fourth, where we're trying to affect those numbers. Uh, this is one of our other goals is to increase the percentage of teachers that are being coached. Um, we started with zero with our coaching cycle, which is a two week coaching cycle. That's our model that we're utilizing through Jim Knight. Um, we had the instructional coaches go through a pretty intensive training based on their feedback. We said, what could I do to help you last year? And they said, we would like some coaching on how to do instructional coaching. So we did an intensive 16 week training that was on Mondays for about four hours. Um, and in that, you can see we went from zero being coached in a specific coaching model to 31 in January. Um, so we're just hoping to continue to increase that across the county. This is a gross slide that you guys can go back to, but this is kind of like the what that happened in instructional coaching. Um, the why, you all can probably fill in better than me. Um, some of it's budgetary, some of it's adding, some of it's seeing the, the value of it. So we obviously went from one, um, which was Weston, to serving all six districts, to now having seven uh, for the seven districts. Um, we talked about that. Um, so Amy Heisey, who is our Lake City instructional coach, uh, gave this presentation at her board meeting um, and talked about the impact that it's having for her. So you guys can look at that. Uh, I don't think we need to go through, except for this is the one Sherry wants me to show. Um, so this is just the study. This is where we want to get with our coaches. Uh, we're headed in that direction. So if you can see, like, you want to stay within the teacher meetings, being in classrooms, um, the, the walkthroughs is that green. You want, like, 80% of the time that instructional coaches are doing to actually be in the classroom working with teachers and students. Um, so we're moving away from them doing everything and anything that they're needed to do to actually getting in and doing this instructional coaching model to impact teachers and help with goals and be there to walk with them. Going. Uh, so based on the model that we're using with Amy, which is where everybody is going to, but a lot of them have been utilizing their coaches in different ways. Amy kind of lucked out that she came in this year while we were doing this model, so she's not having to backfill anything that the other coaches are. In this model, she's now coached with a two-week cycle, 60% of their staff with a plan to get through 100% each year. So that's where we're working towards with every instructional coach, but it's working. So if we stay within the model, um, it's working to get to all all teachers every year with a two-week cycle. Uh, this is just, she thought it was a good number to have. She, she said, it felt like I was meeting with a lot of teachers, and she is. So she's had 228 meeting teacher meetings this year. So it, we're definitely moving that direction though putting our time where it needs to be. These are, you can look at these, these are quotes from teachers that she's actually working with. Uh, at the end of the slide are quotes from teachers that all of our instructional coaches are actually working with. Um, so you can kind of go back and you're, we're seeing the impact that this is having. And keep going. 
Um, Weston, you guys have heard from Weston, but his coaching model is a little bit different. Uh, at River Bluff, it's more of coaching around the teacher's individual goals based on our QCOM plan and him meeting with them three times a year. So his is a little bit different as well as coaching around the reading center. So just keep going. Yeah, we can keep going. So this one, um, based on your guys' feedback uh, and the superintendent's feedback, they wanted to see, you guys have all seen your own graph of um, like where you're sitting, but everybody has said, well, is it working across years? So this is all KW data, not yours individually. Um, so this year, this is the K data that we started working with last year to their first grade. All of these are all the all previous years of KW data. So like we're comparing apples and apples then in that case, instead of like other people's districts and what they're everybody's doing. Um, so we wanna put that in front of you. That was an ask um, from the superintendents and also yourself. So that to me shows working, let's keep going. And how do we make sure it works across all six, seven, or two? And the pandemic was behind those yep. years. Those go uh, like the same trend happens. That's what we have going on with that data, five year data, right? Absolutely, yeah. But I think we can't blame everything on that. No, I know, yeah. but I mean, absolutely, you can see the other years yeah. after that, yeah, it's better. Yes, I agree. I think it's sometimes though, when we're working, I just I struggle with like where do we get out, like move past that a little bit to go like we. Now we got to keep going, and what do we do for the kids that are sitting in our buildings and might be different, but how do we make sure we're still meeting their needs? Okay, um, I think uh, that's it. They know about parents, and then this is just teacher feedback uh, from people working with our coaches across the county. And I think the last slide is just this is the model we're hoping for all instructional coaches going forward. Questions so how often will you snap the line just to see where your progress is in comparison to your goal? I mean, I mean, On the coaching is, model or the reading? Like if, if we look at this six months from now, could we see where we're at in comparison to where we're going? Uh, is there, with is the, it measurable? With the data or with their time? Are you talking about the time? The data compared to, you know, like uh, six months from now, are we at... You know, twenty six percent classroom and uh, oh yes, we can do that per teacher. We can do that per teacher. So teacher. they are all doing it or per instructional coach. Excuse me. Right. Um, they they will. So Amy's is what we're looking for. They've all done the time study. That's where this came from. Yep. Um, and so when they all brought it back, a lot of it was skewed to like I have to run after school programming. I have to yep. like there's all these different. There wasn't things. anyone to be the assessment coordinator, so I'm doing that. So mm -hmm. those are some things we're trying to unwind yep. and pull out of there over time. And but yes, they all have it. And how we're doing it is conversations with administrators going like, okay, if you would like to get to this model, we also have a salute. We can't just pull them. And then right. there's a, a yeah. group of students that needs a teacher during that time. So that's a lot of it is, can we backfill it with other things? Can we apply for our, use our ad, access funding a little bit differently? So those are all conversations of how to get to here. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Are all the districts using the instructional coaches the same way no okay no i know currently. it's not i mean in red wing barb is at burnside which is grades two three and four and i don't believe i'm not going to say for sure because i'm not i don't know for sure but we don't have instructional coaches for k1 i would say up until we brought this slide to the superintendents. We had let superintendents have some decision making in where those coaches were placed okay. in their districts. Okay. We're pulling back on that a little bit now um, because we really, it, it is supposed to be a focus on right. A123. Right. So it could be Sunny or Burnside in your case. But, right. Um, we're trying to get. I know Mike Tagle really wants an instructional coach. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh
Uh, letter E, uh, maintenance of effort. I should have done my present. No, I'm going to do the slides first. Oh. Um, but you know, you said they were in attachment. But I can't, you know, it's a very holy thing. I should have done this first because I don't think uh, SPED finance is as exciting as the structural coaching. But <laughs> anyway, um, equally important. Yes, it is equally as important. <laughs> Right now, I know that many of my districts were all looking to be fiscally responsible um, and use those money, use that money as wisely as we can. We also know that there are times we have to make cuts. And so it's really important that I bring this back to you so it's on your forefront. Um, in special education, we have maintenance of effort, which basically says whatever we spent the previous year, we have to spend that amount or more the next year. So I'm going to go through these first few slides pretty quickly, and then I'm going to show you actually um, a grid that Jackie puts together for us um, to see where we're at. Okay, so the term maintenance of effort, yep, that's limited on. Um, often referred to as MO, so that's how I'll say it. Um, it's placed on us by the federal grant that we're under, the IDEA grant. So it's a federal mandate that we have. And it means that our money has to stay constant year over year. When they, when we look at this, um, the state of Minnesota has to maintain maintenance of effort. And the way it does that is to make sure that every district maintains effort across the state. Thanks, what's neat. All of the requirements for all are actually found in the federal statute. And at, I'm going to say this now while I still have your attention. You could make a really good financial decision with SPED. And I'll give you an example. Kenya Wanamingo had large special education transportation expenditures. We went through that. I, many people went through that to make it more efficient. And they dropped by hundreds of thousands of dollars in that special education transportation. That's really good. We want to do that. The other side of that is we have to now spend, we have to find somewhere to spend that money, okay? Because even if you do something great like that and something that we all should be doing, finding a more efficient way, um, we still can't reduce our effort. So we can't go into the general fund. It's got to stay in special ed. Correct. Okay, so communication is the key. So anytime the district, your district administrators are talking, they're talking about cuts, um, it, we, you absolutely have to have everyone sitting around the table and knowing how each of those cuts can impact. And, and that we can only do that if we're communicating across our systems. So examples of things we do, uh, yep, we'll head to the next one. So examples of things we do, strategies to make sure we are in compliance is we have a caseload policy. That's policy 16. One of those policies at the front that says, if you are a resource teacher at an elementary school, you're gonna have a caseload of 14 to 16. You're at the high school, it'll be 18 to 22. Those are a couple of examples. We also have some under statute, like our birth to three or our setting four staff. They have different statutes. In our setting for it's eight students to one teacher and one parent, for instance. But we staff to that, we right size to that every single year, year over year. Because we don't, we have to do that because if our numbers are going up, our staff should be going up. If our numbers are going down, our staff should be going up. Um, we also, our staff um, complete time and effort documentation, and which we use also in this process, and we do workload analysis. So those are just some of the strategies. All right, next one. If we fail to maintain effort, it, re, um, it results in one or more of us having to take that same amount of money out of our general fund and repaying it to the state. So if I spent 100,000 last year and now I only spent 80,000 this year and I can't justify that, I have to take 20,000 out of my general fund and send it to the state and my maintenance of effort doesn't go down to 80. It's still at 100. So I have to find a way to spend that. Um, 
So it's total dollars, not that has nothing to do with the number of affected children. It correct? does. It does. Hold okay. that back. So it, Hold, hold, hold right. the thought. We are absolutely getting it. So again, we want to make sure that we're doing those staffing pieces um, and that we're anticipating changes. We are going to see, you can go to the next slide, actually, I'm going through this part quickly. You're going to start to see an impact of the increased cross-subsidy revenue that they gave you because you're getting more special ed aid. Special ed aid. Guess what? That means all of our, because you're not using that gen ed. So there's going to be impacts, um, and we're, we'll talk about that. Yeah. When you see the chart, it'll make more yeah. sense. Okay, so there are four ways you can maintain effort. There are two tests. You have to maintain effort twice a year, and there's four ways you can do it. One is the total amount of local funds we spend, the total amount of state and local funds, the per child on local funds or the per child on state and local funds. So there's four ways we pass, okay? There's two tests. The first test is called our eligibility test. This happens in June. Um, by May, we have to put our entire budget into the department system. What they actually do is roll our old one over and then we have to go line through line and retain those, okay? We get that all done. Don't go back up there yet. And they say, yes, it looks like you've budgeted enough to maintain effort. So that's eligibility. They're not going to dig in deeply. You just have to look like you're going to spend enough. If you do, they release your new year, new school year funding on July 1. If you don't, they don't release funding until you do. The bad thing about that is you can't code anything that happened then until you've proved it. So you always want to make sure you passed eligibility by July 1. All right, Cindy, the next one. Here's the big one everyone talks about, the compliance test. So this actually um, comes after the fact. And remember, we're, we just closed out the 22-23 school year last week. Okay, So like I'm, I'm planning right now for 24-25. So kind of confusing, but until all the districts have sorted through everything and the department has it all cleaned up, it's usually about February that we know if we've maintained effort. Um, so if there's anything else. Before I show you, go on to the next one, Cindy, please. Before I show you the maintenance of effort, there are some allowable exceptions. If we have a very senior staff member that leaves and we replace that staff member with someone who's new and maybe just has a bachelor's, there would be a drop. We'd still have a person and a person, but the salary has changed, so that's an allowable exception. We could have a decrease in enrollment. So in one year you were serving 100 kids and now you're serving 50, bad example, but you know what I mean? If we can justify that if that per capita amount went down by the number of students we went down, that could be a justification. We could have a high cost student lead. So a student that needs a sign language interpreter or a one-to-one -one nurse um, would be examples. A termination of a costly expenditure. Um, maybe we did some construction or we had to buy a special vehicle um, and that was more of a one-time thing. Um, and then um, we don't qual currently qualify for this, um, but there is what's called voluntary reduction. I'm old enough to remember there was a time when, what was it called? Um, it was early, yeah. like late federal government. early 2010s. We got more, it was not as it was federal. the other. Yeah. So the federal government funds mental light across the country at approximately 30%. That's an average. Um, 13%. They had always promised to cover 48%. There was a year where they suddenly decided that everyone needed help and they covered it at about 30%. ARRA funding, okay? We had double the money. We have. In that year, you could reduce your maintenance of effort by that federal increase, by half of that federal increase, okay? That's not gonna happen right now. We don't even have this year's budget done at the federal level. That started last October 1. Um, and we're not going to see increases. If we did, however, because we're currently um, disproportionate, we can't do that. 
no district that's disproportionate can reduce maintenance of effort in that way. Okay, next, what was my next slide? Um, yes. this is what, so it, what happens like that eighty hundred thousand dollars and I said, you only spend 80, that's what this slide is about. Um, you'll still be at the higher piece. All right, Cindy, will you pull up that grid I sent you? Please, there it is. You might have to make it up a little bigger. So we're in co-op, so we float maintenance of effort. Okay, so let's say like city made maintenance of effort, Red Wing made it, KW made it, but you three over here didn't make it at all. And we'll say GCD made it. If we add it all up and we make it as a unit, everybody's off the hook. Okay. If we don't make it as a total, then they'll go back to the individual district that didn't make it and recoup the funds. So why do we go back to 1516? Because that's when Minnesota um, put its new, new state um, special ed funding formula in place. So, you, so we in Minnesota have to always go back to that year to find um, in which of the four categories was the highest. Oh, that didn't make a lot of sense, but let me try again. So here's GCD spending. We have the total SPED expenditures. That's one way you can pass the test. Then we have the SPED expense per student based on that number and based on the students we served, not our resident districts, but students we served. There's one way we can pass, there's the two. Um, then the fourth way is local expenditures and local expenditures divided by the students. So in this grid, the yellow is where each district hit each of those categories and that's their high point. So, if it's green, it means we're making it, okay? So at GCD, we're making maintenance of effort. Okay, that's good news for some of you. Um, they just told us that we maintained effort for 22-23. Well, they haven't officially told us, but we went and looked at the reports. Okay, so we're good to go. And now next February, these are the numbers we're going to be looking at. And as we're making cuts, if we look at Canon, Canon hasn't maintained effort in any of the four areas. Okay. Now, all the expenditures might not be in here. These are our preliminary numbers. But as you're sitting around making cuts and spend, know that you have to spend at least what you spent in the previous year. Unless, of course, there have been times when I've had a district that has needed to make cuts and another is spending more and it all comes out the wash and we total. Okay, that happens. Um, Cindy, scroll up a little bit because everyone wants to see if they're making it. <laughs> Half in the test. Oh, too far. Right? There, stop. Okay. So Goodhue is not currently maintaining effort in any of the four areas. Kenyon Wanamingo is not maintaining effort this coming year in any of the four areas. Um, and Kenyon, a lot of that has to do with that transportation. There was about a 300000 drop in your transportation expenditures. And that was a good thing. Okay? But now we have to find some... You know, that sounds weird to say. But it's, okay, Lake City has made it in three of the categories. Your total um, spent expenditures, those divided by kids, and your local divided by kids. Okay, so right now you're looking like everything's, I wouldn't think about it. Keep going down. Red Wing has not made maintenance of effort in any of the categories. This is the first time ever that we've looked at the project projections and I've had multiple districts not making it yet. Okay. And then when you total all of us together, Ozone Road is in three, they're making it. When you total all of us together, this is what they'll look at. Okay, they're not going to look at any of that other data unless we don't make it down here when we total it. We are making it in one category. Trace. Okay, so we have our students <laughs> that are served here and at Tower View. Mm -hmm. And then what about, how does it factor in? Because we, there are resource teachers in our schools that are not hired. They don't work directly. They're hired by one of the entities though. Yeah. So, call them in. But, so where, do, where on that chart, is that the local expenditure per student? Or do you know what I mean? I'm trying to figure out. I don't out, think it impacts like that, but. I'm so, trying to figure out how, what we do 
in our own buildings with our state funding it doesn't interact with our programs because okay. we have to we're tuition billing for our and you're paying that cost right um tower view has about a 0.2 sped teacher right now Okay. Can we kind of say, guy maybe explain where the numbers come from? Yeah. Maybe that'll help. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to figure <laughs> yeah. it all out. Yeah. There isn't a crossover. There isn't yeah. a crossover. So your total special ed expenditures are what you are coding in your district to finance 740. So it's all of your board. That's your state special ed expenditures. Okay. So, so all of this takes into account is just state all three of those people back there are 740 people. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're all state special ed. Okay. Yeah. So then the student served is, you know, obviously your student served, and then you take your state special ed expenditures, you divide it by your student served to get the expense per people. And there's only four staff okay. over here who are not straight yeah. 740 staff. Now, so it's your staff and your supplies too. Yeah, right. Hold them right, all right. to that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, the next line you is state aid, years. and this is where cross up CA is going to bite us in the butt. Okay. Because your state aid went up. So your total special ed expenditures minus your state aid equals your local expenditures. Okay. That's going to go down as state aid goes up. So then that is... It'll be harder to make maintain effort in that category. Right. So local expenditures, is that what we spend out of our general fund? Yes, that is technically cross-subsidy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to spend less because they're paying more. Correct. <laughs> and we're going to get in trouble for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Potentially, if we don't make it. And I would say, we told the legislature. Right, like that's ridiculous. They have legislators that gave them. We told them that. We said there is a domino. If there isn't, there's going to be a problem. Right. Um, but we also know that the federal government isn't contributing their share. And the cost of special education mm -hmm. is hard. And it's pulling a lot from the general funds of districts. We understand that. But um, yeah, it used to be that the, our 740 positions were covered at about 50%, then it was 60%. It's going to be close to 80% now. Well, cutting a special education teacher, you're only saving 20% of that salary. If you have to make cuts, it might not be the first place I'd go. So, so step and but, is the but I'm still going to make you right size to know your code. Yeah, that, okay. Yeah. <laughs> when the state comes into an individual district and wants to make up the difference on what we aren't maintaining and go into our general fund, what are they going to be doing with that amount of money that they take or don't give us back? I think they have to remit it back to the to federal, federal government. government. Let's go back to the federal government, which isn't funding us enough to begin. <laughs> Yes, that would be correct. That's right. right. I feel like the only time in recent history that we've had adequate funding for education was the ESSER money because of the pandemic. Yeah, and then all of save, a sudden, save it, save this money. Right. The, the problem, problem that ESSER money caused, money. the problem that it caused, though, is yeah. we got dependent. districts didn't right size during it. Right. Right. And some of them came into it with some financial issues. It kind of got them through, and now there's a cliff. Right. They used it, because they if you're still got that. positions out there that are covered that were covered previously right. with Esther, right. that money's gone. So now so you have to shift all of that to point two. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> so again, did it. I'm not showing you this so that you. Uh, this is these are things Jackie and I are here about. Mm -hmm. But I want to remind you as you're making these budget cuts. That we have to spend this. We don't. There is no exception except those four that I showed you. And you already showed this to the superintendents. Yeah, and we show it to them every year. Oh, okay, so all of our current superintendents yes. have seen it. Okay, they have seen it. Yeah, and I want to put a little caveat on the projected twenty three twenty four. That is best data in Cedra as of the end of January. Right. It may and not so reflect your my shift. <laughs> That's why I'm. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's going to make me feel better or not, but I. <laughs> with, with shouldn't go down. It shouldn't go down. I guess I, I'm saying yeah, some of these numbers may be artificial. Million short right now. Okay. Can we get a copy? Can you email us a copy of that, or is that like? Well, it's all public data. It's all on the MDE website. Right. I guess I'd want to know what. Um, I, I could. In, I could. I don't want you to start comparing each other. And no, 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 no. That's not the point. 
think at this point, but right. it's like drama. Um, but yes, we could at least get you your own district. That right, helps. that'd be great. I just don't understand it, and I want to study it. Absolutely. We have 40 districts in SOD, right? We have 23 districts in the state of Minnesota who are probably also under this same kind of right. issue. Right. How do you expect to go back to a district and pull money out of its general fund and work them backward? while they're trying to work themselves out are mandated by the federal government to do that. Then how does MDE manage that? Because MDE is the one it. who's going to have to look at the district and go, oh, I'm sorry, you're off plan mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. They will. Well, I don't know how does MDE, I don't know how they propose to fix it. Or we just close the districts down or what? SOD is really tough. I've been listening to things that has to go through to justify everything. Yeah, it's hard. So, an overview, a reminder of maintenance of effort, <clears throat> and a reminder of the value of being part of yes. the CED. Yes, it and will having to because it's on your own. Yeah, if you were, if it was your own district, that's a huge burden. The fact that we float it among us is helpful, and it has been helpful to individual districts over to over that time. So it's not like one district has gotten benefit. That's not it. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, doesn't look like we have any old business. So we'll move on to new business. Uh, Non-renewable is yeah, it's not renewals. It's not renewal. Yes. <laughs> kind of like Yeah. yeah. Just like it's like the opposite of solar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Non-renewal. Thanks. And so <laughs> these are resolutions. So we have seven resolutions that uh, I'll read the first paragraph of them. Um, be, it be it resolved by the Board of Education District number 6051-61 that pursuant of Minnesota Statute 121A.40, Subdivision 5, that the teaching contract of Teacher 1 a probationary teacher in education district number 6051-61 is hereby terminated at the close of the current 2023-2024 school year. Did you repeat that? No, <laughs> I will six more times. Okay, do uh, you have a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve resolution for non-renewal of teacher one. Is there a second? One second. It's been moved by Dawn, seconded by Marilyn. Any discussion? Dawn? Yes. Therese? Yeah. Marilyn? Yes. Bob? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Jason? Yes. <laughs> All right. Second one. Be resolved by the Board of, Ed Board of Education District number 6051-61 that pursuant Pursuant of Minnesota Statute 122A.40, Subdivision 5, that the teacher contract of teacher number two, a probationary teacher in education district number 6051-61 is hereby terminated at the close of the current 2023-2024 school year. Is there a motion? A motion. Second. Okay. The motion by Jerry, second <laughs> by Bob. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. Dawn? Aye. Therese? Aye. Marilyn? Aye. Bob? Yes. Jerry? Aye. Jason? Yes. All right. Um, be it resolved by the Board of Education District number 6051-61 that pursue, pursuant of Minnesota Statute 121A.40, Subdivision 5, that the teach, teaching contract of teacher number three, a probationary teacher in education district number 6051-61 is hereby terminated at the close of the current 2023-2024 school year. Is there a motion? Therese motions, is there a second? I'll second it. Jason second it. Any discussion? Ed Dawn? Aye. Therese? Aye. Marilyn? Aye. Bob? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Jason? Yes. 
Okay, be resolved by the Board of Education District number 6051-61 that pursuant of Minnesota statute 121A.40, subdivision five, that the teaching contract of teacher number four, a probationary teacher in education district number 6051-61 is hereby terminated at the close of the current 2023-2024 school year. Your motion so moved motion by Marilyn second second by Jerry any discussion Don aye Therese aye Marilyn aye Bob aye Jerry aye Jason yes be resolved by the board of education district number 6051-61 that Pursuant to Minnesota Statute 121A.40, Subdivision 5, that the teaching contract of teacher number 5, a probationary teacher in Education District number 6051-61, is hereby terminated at the close of the current 2023-2024 school year. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Bob. Second. Second by Marilyn. Any discussion? Dawn? Aye. Therese? Aye. Marilyn? Aye. Bob? Aye. Gary? Aye. Jason? Yes. All right. Be it resolved by the Board of Education District number 6051-61 that pursuant of Minnesota Statute 121A.40 subdivision 5 that the teaching contract of teacher number 6, a probationary teacher, in education district number 6051-61 is hereby terminated at the close of the current 2023-2024 school year. The motion? Aye. Jerry motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dawn. Any discussion? Dawn? Aye. Therese? Aye. Marilyn? Aye. Bob? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Jason? Yes. Be it resolved by the Board of Education District number 6051-61 that pursuant of Minnesota Statute 121A.40 Subdivision 5 that the teaching contract of teacher number 7, a probationary teacher in Education District number 6051-61 is hereby terminated at the close of the current 2023-2024 school year. Is there a motion? Aye. Uh, motion. Is there a second? Okay. Three seconds. Any discussion? Any none? Dawn? Aye. Therese? Aye. Marilyn? Aye. Bob? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Jason? Yes. You can do the other second. Come on, Jerry. <laughs> okay. On to letter B. Uh, GCED 2024-2025 calendar. So you will see that we've built the calendar much like in previous years. Um, there is a spring break like there has been. Um, some of our districts, I'll just point out some highlights. Some of our districts on the 2nd and 3rd of January are bringing students back in. Um, we did not do that. We have planned PD for that day. We need X number of um, days. With the READ Act, um, it is going to use nearly all of our PD time next year. Um, so... And that was part of it. I'm um, trying to think if there's still, we still have the um, early releases on the calendar as in previous years. Um, conferences are on their open house. Um, total staff drain days is still 186. Um, in anticipation of in anticipation of where we're going with negotiations, we believe we will be reducing student days slightly we can still get to 1020 but we need to move some of those student days into pd days to get the read act done so um, our current teacher contract says we will have 
174 student days and 186 staff days. And it says it just like that. We are proposing to say up to 172 student days and still 186 staff, but the up to to give us some movement in there. Some of our districts have 169 student days, some have 170, some have 171. So it varies a little bit. Um, really, it comes down to the 1,020 hours. Any questions on the calendar? We have our last student day on the 30th of May. Um, nearly all of your districts do. Um, we thought about, you know, anyway, this is how we did it. We thought we had to be done when they were done as well. For transportation, less transportation cost for you, et cetera. All right. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, letter C. Oh, we have to. I need board approval oh. for that. <laughs> Sorry, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by three, second by Don. Is there any discussion? The only discussion I have, and well, I guess this is calendar days, not board related. Mm -hmm. so we're, we've talked about potential for um, having. Uh, workshop days mm -hmm. board. So that's separate from this. That's separate so, from this, yeah. but we should decide how we'll we'll discuss discuss other. Other. Okay. Yeah. That sounds yep. good. I was thinking that could be that calendar. All right. Any other discussion? See none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. Now on we'll see. State approved alter alternative program. So, um, fifteen. Okay. So now that we talked about the calendar, you maybe noticed, maybe you didn't, um, that we didn't include the Tower View program on it for this coming year. To be fiscally responsible and to best serve our member districts, I'm going to recommend to the board that they take action to close the GCD site. Okay, that doesn't do anything with Tower View. That doesn't change anything about that program. But we and MDE would close our ability to hold that site, okay, and and pass it forward. And I'm going to lead you through um, a timeline. Um, this has actually been on 15 superintendent and board agendas in the last of hours um, in the last few years. So. Um, our assumption based on this timeline I'm going to share and actions by Red Wing is that this program and site will be taken by Red Wing. We, uh, um, that has, every indication has said that. So um, let me bear with me and I'll go through this timeline. So in December of 22, the GCD superintendents reviewed the costing of our state approved um, programs. They directed us to cut $200,000 from the programs. They wanted, um, GCD to really show that they were putting skin in the game and that we were being fiscally responsible, just like you would in your districts. That was a fair request. Um, we also discussed the location of our middle level ALC. Um, it's the best place for it. We, and we discussed that often because it really could go to any one of our member districts. In January of 23, the superintendents um, asked Jackie and I to study new costing models to get a more cost efficient ALC program. COVID. I will blame COVID on this. Prior to COVID, our bills for the students attending our um, ALC programs were relatively stable. But during the COVID years, the, part, um, the enrollment in those programs dropped. And not knowing when kids were coming or going, we couldn't respond as quickly with staffing. Okay, so our staffing stayed the same. So the cost per student went up. Um, now that COVID's over and things are right sizing, we probably would never have been in that conversation. Not that we should, all, we should always be looking to be fiscally responsible. Um, we did also discuss um, in February 23 at the next superintendent's agenda, we presented them with what we're using now, the Z costing model. So now if a student attends full time in one of our SAAPs, we bill the gen ed formula that you get. Um, so if we run over, we have to pull that money out of our fund balance or something else. There is no revenue, other revenue source for us for that, but that was the agreement we made. Um, 
The superintendent's asking me to go to the GCD board for approval. We also discussed expanding this building to bring the two programs together. We did a tremendous amount of work on staffing, shared services, how to reduce that 200,000. The only way to really reduce that was to program the two, was to run the two programs together and share the staffing because it's hard to, we even have a, we have a social worker that runs back and forth. We have other teachers. Um, and if Tower View was, um, you know, where Southeast is, Southeast Community, University of Minnesota Southeast, um, was that might be different. But when it's 20 minutes away, that it's really impactful to have, try to share stuff. <laughs> Again, we were just trying to follow the directive that we um, had been given. We talked about transportation reductions. Most of our members would see transportation reductions if the two programs were co-located. Um, on, on March 9th, uh, the GCD board met. Um, they talked about RBEC space issues, staffing, transportation meeting. Um, again, we were putting everything forward to try to make that 200,000 um, line in the sand that the superintendents had put. March 23rd, GCD board member, um, board members connected with their superintendents and um, we came up with a date for a special meeting, superintendents and board. We held that meeting here. Our boards came, our superintendents came. We brought them through all, all of the data, um, the number of staff, the number of the transportation, the costs of the sites, everything. Um, then, um, Following that, on April 4th, we had another um, special GCD board. Um, or that was the meeting where they all came together. April 17th, then, the, the Red Wing board um, had a meeting, and I attended that. I think Therese was there. Um, it is very it is very clear to me um, that the Tower View site is really important to the people of Red Wing. So um, most of the comments were about how that site can really change the trajectory for kids. If, if a child is struggling and they're struggling in a building and you just move them to the other side of the building, you might not have the impact you would have if they walk into a new site and have a start over, if you will. And um, you know, we have great staff in these programs that connect with kids. So the thought of maybe some of that changing um, was a very clear message that 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 was really important to them that that not change. Okay. April 27th, uh, the GCD board meeting um, we presented superintendent recommendations that included combining the programs to realize cost savings. Um, but I said, you know, I wanted to take a look at, could we spend money to make money per se? So I put forth, the goal of increasing the enrollment in the two programs. And by increasing the enrollment, you drop the cost per kid. Okay. At the same time, um, the Red Wing Board um, was meeting to talk about, you know, what should they do with this program? And I will say since it was in 2013 that Red Wing came to us and said, we don't want to run a middle-level ALC anymore. It's done. And I said, oh, no, 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 you cannot get rid of a middle-level ALC because without that, you cannot run targeted services and credit recovery. And in my mind, targeted services are the most important part. Um, okay. So at that point, they said, well, we're not going to do it. So we met as districts, and we decided that GCD would become the state-approved programming for the ALC's credit recovery, and we would run that middle level program. So that's when we started that. Since that time, there have been four different years where um, Red Wing has talked about pulling the Teleview program back. I understand it had they had built the program back in 1986. It was a part of their culture. Having someone else run it um, just maybe didn't feel right, okay? But in 10 years, there were four springs where I didn't know if I was staffing for the program or not staffing for the program. What were we, you know, it was this up and down and back and forth. Um, and here we are again. Um, so let's see. Um, and at that meeting, um, there was a 7-0 vote um, to hopefully assume oversight of the ALC or uh, of either um, an ALP or ALC program in Red Wing um, 
for the 24-25 school year. So they were really seriously looking at it. They hadn't made a final decision. I, it wasn't a final decision, but it was a um, review programming structure with the possibility to assume oversight. Right. So the goal was to assume it. I, I'm not, I did not say you voted to take it. That, okay. We haven't gotten there <laughs> at all. Right. <laughs> um, and so, um, They also had a meeting on May 1st to talk about it. Um, and I know that they were planning to do studies. Um, between May and December, um, the Red Wing superintendent, the director of teaching and learning, um, be, uh, were going to be doing some studies. I also know that we coordinated all of our PD out there with Red Wing this year so that they would be on board with what we were doing. And if there was going to be a movement, that it would be seamless um, or more seamless. Um, Red Wing has really wanted those teachers to be a part of their professional development. They are on a Red Wing contract. I understand that. At the same time, we need them to do professional development for the programs we're running. So there's always this kind of push and pull. And it, um, I think. I understand it. It's a long piece of culture in Red Wing. Um, I have reached out a couple of times because I'm trying to build my budgets for next year. I'm trying to know um, well, what programs do I have to budget for? Um, we have been told um, that Red Wing, um, Red Wing will not be selling any contracts to the co-op for next year. So, um, that would lead me to believe, I don't know, I have asked, I have asked, I said, does that mean that if Tower View was still ours, those staff I wouldn't be able to use? I have not gotten an answer. All I've gotten is Red Wing is not, it wants to keep Red Wing employed people, people on Red Wing contracts working in Red Wing. Okay, understand. Um, so, um, it had gone to the Red Wing board on their January 2nd meeting to have a discussion, but it was tabled because the superintendent was ill. That happens, okay? Um, we anticipated that it would come back. It has not been scheduled to come back for a meeting. And um, I'm really, I'm moving into, I need to know what we're planning for. Um, so knowing that the Red Wing staff the staff at Tower View um, are the right type of staff to have in an ALC program. Not that they, they would certainly be successful other places, um, Red Wing High School and, you know, but I to start over, um, so, um, like I said, we've been in this position about four times in the last 10 years. I think this program is very near and dear to Red Wing. Um, and so I did mention two words, ALP and ALC. Red Wing can apply for either one. The difference is in an ALC, you have to have at least one partner school district, but that's possible. Um, ALP, you do not. And Red Wing can run an ALP out of the Tower View site. Okay, it's, it's their site to do that with. Um, Trying to think if I didn't cover anything. <clears throat> Red Wing would most likely continue to do credit recovery and targeted services through us because you need to have a middle level program in order to do that. So we anticipate that that would continue. Another reason that this is more timely right now is the credit recovery and targeted services school year starts on June 1st. So it's not like we don't have to know until August because we're really starting the next school year on June 1st for targeted services and credit recovery. It doesn't run on a regular school year calendar. Again, to be physically responsible and best serve all of you, I'm, re I'm recommending that the board take action to close our MDE site. It doesn't, it just takes our name out of it, okay? And um, I think, I think it's just time to let it go and it's important to write. Um, this would take effect for the 24-25 school year. Our assumption based on the timeline and actions by Red Wing is, is that the program and site will be taken out of Red Wing. If that ends up not being the case, we will continue to support any student that needs that type of programming. 
Um, as a matter of fact, we are updating our application to run both seat based and independent study. If we have students that we would need to help with that accommodation. And the reason I bring it to you is that only a board can close an MDE site. So if you go on the MDE website right now, it lists River Bluff Education Center and 5RO Elementary and Tower View as you know, different sites we have and it takes board action to actually close the site. I have, um, so any questions for me? That was a lot. I tried to keep it short. I do have, um, I do have the board minutes or soup minutes from any of those meetings if you want more detail. So when was the last superintendent meeting that you discussed? Oh, um, yeah, I would have, yes, that could be. When, yes. December of 23, okay. so just a couple months ago. Yep. Yes. What are the impacts on the non Red Wing districts? And there wouldn't this, be so any impacts. It would be no. You had there are a few uh, uh yeah, yeah, monthly, monthly enrollment. enrollment. There's a Probably handful kind of, of kids at Power View uh, course. So yeah, that, there's been some changes since then. So so there's less than there was. It, it's nearly I think I have two students from a from non Red Wing district. Non Red Wing district. So when we did this on the 20th, there were four students from non-Red Wing districts, one Lake City, three from Goodhue, and the other 55 were from Red Wing. So do you need us to make an action? On I would need you to time? make take an action. And you know, Red Wing, you know, maybe I'm completely wrong, but I I haven't been able to get an answer. I need to do staffing. I just and ev it, it feels Seven like every decision. I know, but it has come. It's been like this many, many springs in a row. Um, and I think the community and listening to those public comments, the community is so in, is very invested in that program being a Red Wing program. I've heard that, um, and you know. I guess, Therese, if a chance to say that, I, if Red Wing decides they don't want to do it and they want to approach us and ask us to open the site again, we would absolutely consider that. That's what we did the last time we were asked by Red Wing. So I've never turned a district down. I just need some places to start being able to make decisions. Can I say something as principal or not? Sure. Jason, I guess that's your choice. If I don't or not. Yeah. So uh, because they're on the Red Wing contracts, that's for me is where we're sitting at because the other Red Wing teachers were told that we will not purchase your services for 24, 25. That's where I'm sitting at the principal. Like, I don't know who my teachers are. So help me understand that. The purchase of service? Yes. So each year we do, we purchase service from other districts and districts purchase service from us. Mm -hmm. um, Red Wing teachers and us have been told that Red Wing will not be selling Red Wing contracts to us for the coming year. And I, that's that's okay. Every district can make that choice. There's nothing right. wrong with that at all. Right. Um, so, but I, then I'm, you know, put us in a like, well, are we hiring or are we not hiring? What, you know, so this way, Red Wing can make its decision. It's a lot less political, maybe. Um, and and again, the last time Red Wing decided not to run a program, they came to us and asked us to consider it. I'm not saying this board wouldn't consider that at that point. But I also need to, I need to move on and let you make that decision if that's what you're going to do. And I'm good. I have my entire career has been focused on building programs for at-risk kids. It's where my heart is. So it has, I want something to happen that it'll be successful. Mm -hmm. Mr. Woman, I can bring the motion forward to uh, close the Tower View site for DCED. Marilyn made a motion to, is there a second? I will second. Don, second it. Is there any other discussion? 
All right, seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, thank you. I abstain. Yes, I do. Yep. I understand that. Yep. Just, just like, I know. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, yeah they, no, I know. Okay. I just, you can abstain and agree. So I, yeah, I don't feel like I know enough to make an informed decision. That so I'm like, not going to. I thought it sounds like a conflict of interest, gonna, actually. Yeah, I'm not going to. Is what I would say. I'm not going to step in anything. I So <laughs> that's what I would like to do. <laughs> don't you have an interesting board report when you go back? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thanks for all that information. Yeah, we have a lot yeah, going on. Good. We got that. Yeah, thank you. Good. Yeah, know. All right, so we'll move on to other. And uh, so in other, we've toyed around with the idea of having uh, some work sessions. Yeah. Um, and I think it's probably a good idea. <laughs> Let's do I do too. Sell them. Like finance. Uh, <laughs> on the books. Uh, you can just to talk about it. Yeah. So, I know, but I yeah. guess we all. Know. It's probably not an action item, more of a planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess what are others' thoughts on? Depends on when you want to do well, it. Well, I think it'd be like it'd be. I think we'd only maybe have like maybe two or three throughout the year. Are you just going to tag them on the Thursday nights where we already have block for this meeting? Well, we kind of like to do it prior. Prior to the meeting. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like yeah. you, you want like to go back prior. like a week prior. Yeah. A week prior. Or two weeks prior. Yeah, we've had some discussion. We have fairly new board members, some new soups, different <laughs> things like that. I'm only even two or three years, three years on the board now, and, and special ed financing still blows my mind. Yeah. So I think the idea is let's inform, understand how billing works and you know and then maybe even pull in the superintendents to help the board members like right muddle through it a little bit better and so is it a meeting with the superintendents uh so one of the meetings the superintendents brought up maybe that three of the superintendents could come to one like work session mm -hmm. and we could have a discussion on finance on it and then maybe one of our other work sessions the other three could come in and we could Discuss so they could also tie it back so, to the district for you. Sure, sure. No, yeah. great. So we it's just trying to work it into another well <laughs> schedule. I mean, I know, all, yeah, I know. It's I like think, if yeah. you if you've already had a night booked or blocked, right? You yeah. know, happy to come early, yeah. right? Perhaps. Or stay a little later, perhaps. <laughs> 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 it's just a, <laughs> well, even perhaps I'm trying to be flexible, but yeah. we are after. But yeah. I mean, to add a whole bunch of things into other weeks right. with all the other events and things that are going on, it's going to be. Right. I assume you want everybody to attend. I mean, right? it'd be nice, yes. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, for an alternate, yeah. The yeah, Arkansas Center your alternate. Yeah. Right. But that is. <laughs> well, and I wonder. Did you, know, you never get the information yeah. you need as a regular attendee? Right. Is there any right. wisdom in? I mean, I know it's a public meeting and people can do whatever they want, but man, I'd like to get some of my companions over here to hear this and learn it too, not as voting members, but. Well, we have done that each year. We've done an, um, yeah. board, an all well, county that, board meeting. But that, I mean, the one that I went to, came to. It's usually out in the cafeteria. Yeah, but that is so, that's a huge, it's so many topics. With this just so focus topics, on. That's good feedback. We can do whatever. a lot of topics, but I mean, <laughs> in a uh, to workshop, give anyone could come. To, sure. You know, I just don't want to make people think I, you know, if I invite people and they come, that I'm, I want to be above board and transparent. That I think all of our board members should come and hear this because it affects everybody. It'll be open meetings. So yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. able to partake. Yeah, but I don't. You know, I don't want to just have people show up without. And I might not be able to get anybody to come, but if I could get a few more ears on it, I'd be really happy. I think it's really a good idea. We've yeah. never had workshops before. I know, I think a couple of year. Yeah. Um, and we spend it on billing and finance on one, you know, whatever your topics are, but you, we can dig deeper into those topics. And I think that'll mean us providing in the but it's us and the superintendent, unlike what we would want right. on the agenda, and right. then we would feed it back to the chair and Sherry and Perfect. And Jason could work on the agenda and what the what the priorities are for the board and members. If that makes sense. Yeah. So is it a couple of year or a couple of months? I mean, what are we what what are we thinking? A couple of years. Couple of year. Okay, yeah. so we'd have since it's February now, 
we could have some advance notice about when it was going to be tomorrow. Well, <laughs> we would have to post it as yeah. well. Bring the heads out. <laughs> <laughs> Do, is this is this a calendar adjustment? Or, it would be yeah. a board calendar. So we would have to the next board meeting have it on the agenda. <laughs> If we can't do it today. No, 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 it's not what's it's actually something. Okay. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll yeah. have that be an agenda item. Do people have recommendations for then a date in April? Maybe we do one in April and then we do one in the fall. Yeah. Or do you want to bring those recommendations? We'll put the board agenda on there. Yes. In the meantime, yeah. why don't you reach out to your superintendents? Think about what date <laughs> might work. And in the future, can we have a placeholder on the organizational meeting for this? Yes. Yeah. We absolutely will. So you've got the prep done. So, yes, I don't know. Maybe we can send out one of them. When is our April meeting? The doodles like Cindy sends out, then maybe April's we can put like a bunch of dates in April right. and see what works for everybody. Well, or do we want to add it to the board meeting on the 25th of April because we're I think already they here in April? Think. Well, how long is your workshop going to be? I mean, how long is it going to be? I would think it's, it's going to be meeting. a couple hours if it's being impactful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So, whatever, yeah. seven to nine or whatever, like this is. And because it's both seven to nine or something. Okay. Link doesn't bother me. It's just I got to be able to get there. That's all. So, do all night, have, if you want me to. Did we just have Cindy send out a doodle for dates and There April? you go. Well, and we then can, we yeah. can respond to that and click on she'll put all like five dates and then you can pull which ones work for you and then come come march at our board, board members we'll and, have that uh, information and, and, yeah. and, yeah. and superintendents yeah, yeah. Uh, you put it on your yeah. yeah. just us just us and i'm telling you more of them yeah i i mean all boards are different right Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Question of pay comes up. They're going to be like, "Am I getting paid for this?" And I'm going to be like, "No." All right. And we're going to move on. Like, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, we're going to move on to comments. Board and director. Uh, looks like graduation is at River Bluff Education Center, May twenty fourth at one thirty, and looks like everybody is invited. Getting dates out early. Yeah, I want to thank you for doing that because I, as soon as I read that, I sent out a text to all my board members so they know. Yeah, this is when it is. So they mean a lot to the kids. It does. Very cool. The GCE ceremony is June 1st. Yeah, June 1st is GCE. So this. That, that graduation ceremony is the River Bluff students in reach step. Right. Place. Okay. Um, uh, uh, but the GC, anyone graduating with the GCD diploma? Oh, is June 1st. that's okay. So that would be at 10 30 a.m. June 1st, the Saturday. So who, so who would be people that graduate from? We can send you a list. Thanks. Of graduate students. That'd be easy. That yeah, thank you. Is that like river or I guess I'm not asking. Like, like like right from the graduating five. from high school oh. is June first. Right. Graduating from high school. Okay. Whatever high school. Usually five rivers. We'll first. send something. Okay, up. thank you. Good. All right. Any other comments? All right. Our next meeting is uh, Thursday, March 28th at 7, right here. Uh, the motion is here. So move. Your motion is there a second? I'll second. Bob, second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Hold the same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a statute. <laughs> 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 <laughs>